A couple of days ago, the United States Coast Guard gave us an investigation update into the Ocean Gate Titan sub implosion. It's amazing how time flies, but it's already been nearly four months since the Titan submersible imploded at the Titanic shipwreck site while taking tourists down in an exhibition. And I'm sorry I didn't alert you about this two days ago. I was actually traveling back from Dallas, Texas, where I went for the 2023 Vid Summit Conference, hosted by Daryl Eves and, of course, none other than Mr. Beast himself, Jimmy Donaldson. And how ironic that I was there seeing him, yeah, because Mr. Beast was invited to go onto the Titan sub. And who knows, he may have been on that particular dive that had the implosion had he gone. So people have been asking me all summer, okay, what's the latest update? Who's doing the investigation? What's going on? Well, here is our first official update from the Coast Guard on this right here. So it says the engineers have recovered and transferred remaining Titan submersible debris and evidence from the North Atlantic seafloor on October 4th. So they actually completed this last Wednesday, October 4th. And it says here, the U.S. Navy supervisor of salvage and diving, they probably used their ships to do it. And they had people there from the uh, NTSB, as well as the Canadian TSB, which I've mentioned all of this for you before, back in July. Okay, so here's who is in charge of the investigation. The United States Coast Guard spearheaded this with some international partners. And this began with what's called a Coast Guard Marine Board of Investigation. The MBI is the highest level of investigation that they do. And this came straight from the top with a convening order here on June 23rd. This investigative panel to be formed with Captain Jason Newbar as the chairman. Okay, the Coast Guard's other partners here in this investigation are the National Transportation and Safety Board here in the U.S., but the Coast Guard is the lead on this one. You have the Transportation Safety Board of Canada, the Marine Accident Investigation Branch in U.K., and then over in France, they're involved as well. This is the French Marine Casualties Investigation Board. So these are your four partners that are going to be involved in this. When they arrived in Port of Newfoundland in Canada with all of the wreckage from the Titan submersible, those first five pieces of debris they found in June were originally taken down to Newport, Rhode Island. But where is this batch taken? Okay, so why is the Coast Guard so tight-lipped about all of this? Why aren't they giving us more information? Why aren't they telling us what port they're bringing the debris into? So if I had to take a guess, I think they probably brought it to Newport, Rhode Island, which is allegedly where the first batch of debris was back in June. The text, any audio files, any logs that they had back and forth between the Polar Prince and the Titan submersible down below. All of that stuff was sent over to Canada's Transportation Safety Bureau office in Ottawa. Now back to the present news release from October 10th. Here's what is interesting about this here is they said the recovered evidence was successfully transferred to a U.S. port for cataloging recovered debris. But here's the eerie part here. Look at this. Additional presumed remains were carefully recovered from within Titan's debris and transported for analysis by U.S. medical professionals. And that's pretty much all they gave us. They also gave us this picture as well that you see here. So let's take a close up look at this photo that the Coast Guard issued the other day. So here we've got a couple of ladies from the Coast Guard's Engineering Safety Division and they're here inspecting it. Now this photo was shot on October 1st. So remember, they were still bringing up debris, and it was on the 4th that they completed bringing everything up. So as we try to zoom in here, and they didn't really give us the highest resolution either. It's, it's only like 2,000 pixels. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. My, my Samsung Galaxy Ultra does a lot higher resolution than this nonsense. Um, but unfortunately, this is what we get from our government agencies quite often. And But if we look here, I can't tell if this is like scrapes or this this right here this white substance looks like a a residue of some type maybe some type of liquid or paste or paint i don't know but it looks more like it was a liquid at one time this looks more cementy it's just really hard to tell unless you're right there to put your hand on it and down here i don't even know what this is might be a scrape but this is the rear aft dome and then as we look at it, it looks like it's pretty well intact. Now remember, there was a ring, a titanium ring between this and the carbon fiber hull. We will show you how it all connected there in just a minute. But I um, wanted to show you that, I mean, this looks like it's pretty well intact. I don't see any deformities or anything. I do see here what looks like some corrosion. So I don't know if that was from something that was already there or was it from when it was at the bottom of the ocean sitting there for almost three months? if that's what caused it. 
but so far, and, and I don't know why they only give us this one photo. What about some of the other debris? And another thing that everybody's wondering right now, including me, what about all of those text files that they supposedly got? All of that evidence from the boat and the interviews with the witnesses. Why don't they tell us some of the stuff that they've got already? I want to know, have they analyzed any possible um, information going back and forth between the submarine and the polar prints up above on the surface? That's what I want to get at right now. Here's a couple of photos I can show you too that shows when the Titan sub was under construction. And here is that rear aft doom as they call it. And this is where it is before all of the equipment and the balancing and other stuff was put here. This was the other part in this section here that was actually pulled up from the floor of the debris site back in June. This is the part that they rescued. Now, if you remember back in June, they said there was two parts left behind. So we know the aft dome was one of them, and I'm really hoping that that acrylic porthole was the other one. And here's another photo of it showing the titanium dome, the aft dome, before it was even mounted onto the Titan submarine. And so here they are looking at it, and we just see a few little nicks and scrapes and stuff on it, nothing big. So who knows when those marks on the dome were acquired that we saw on the deck of the boat after it was pulled up last week. So here's where the aft dome fits into the entire structure here on the right hand side. You can see it just to the left of all of the orange equipment. And then here in this drawing, they show all of the previous debris that was collected back in June and how it fits around it. It appears they captured everything, well except where is all of the chunks of the carbon fiber, the main cylinder? So far we haven't seen any picture or heard them mention anything whether they recovered a single piece, not even a, a one inch piece or a sliver or anything. We simply don't know. And also the most important piece of evidence is, duh man, remember? What about that porthole? That big acrylic porthole? We've analyzed that thing to death, right? I want to know if they found that. Was it intact? Was it cracked? Was it shattered in pieces? Can they not find it? I would imagine it's pretty difficult to find down on the ocean floor because of the transparency of it and everything. You might see right through it and not know you're looking right at it. Hey, but check it out. They did give us this, though. It says here, the MBI will continue evidence analysis and witness interviews ahead of a public hearing regarding this tragedy. But having this public hearing, this could be good for us. They might give us a lot more information that we've had until now. Now, don't get too caught up in this. Don't think, oh, well, we'll get to ask questions. Usually, you're only allowed to make a comment, not ask questions that they will answer. But maybe they'll hear it at least, but I'm hoping they'll at least give us that opportunity. Okay, now, here's my theory of one thing that I think could have prevented the accident from happening. Just one simple little step. Let me know what you think in the comments about this. But you remember I showed you on the previous videos about how the carbon fiber was wrapped around that big steel mandrel here. They, like the, it's like a drum. You start it off on that drum. And here you can see the chains pulling it out afterwards. So they remove the steel mandrel when they're done. What do you think would happen if they had left that steel mandrel in there and they didn't remove it? Do you think that would have given a little bit more support? to our carbon fiber hull, let us know down in the comments below. That would be pretty interesting to consider. Now, we don't know how heavy that mandrel was. Would it have weighed the same amount if they had used titanium as the body of the vessel there? We don't know. So these are all questions to get your head going. Let us know. And as the Coast Guard gives us more updates, you can bet I'll be sure to let you know. So thanks for joining us today, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next one.